walking is one of the best ways to get anywhere. Even today, when we have all these fun and powerful motors and engines to get us from point to point, there are some places that you can only reach by walking. Incidentally, walking is a core skill in learning how to animate, and creating a cycle is one of the core skills in animation that is necessary to master outside of like the bouncing ball, squash and stretch, and, all, and the 12 other principles of animation. A walk cycle is a really excellent way to practice some of the core skills of the software that you're using, as well as learn so, like timing and spacing and things of that nature. So to aid in my learning, I decided to make five different walk cycles today. If you would like, you can view this as the first step on the way to building my dream. Oh, hi, I'm Strain, and it's my dream to build an animation studio, or at the very least, make some really awesome animations. So here we have just a normal old walk cycle. It's nothing fancy. It'll get you from A to B. You're not going to get any compliments on it, but it's going to be used a lot, right? This is going to be the walk cycle that doesn't have a whole lot of personality, but it's got enough. You know, he's just vibing. He's just going from A to B, right? No need to get fancy with it. This one, I learned a lot from this one. There was like particularly the, how to do a cycle properly. It was super interesting, super fun. Uh, and it, honestly, it was super short. So I did, I redid the walk cycle like four or five times just so I could make sure that I had those basics down. And yep, it's just a, a simple walk cycle. Homie's just a going about his day. There's not a lot of personality injected into it, but I save those for the later walk cycles. All right, so this one was a little bit of a challenge, namely because I didn't allow myself to use the controllers that I normally have to use on these characters. So I, I made this animation strictly with the graph editor. I didn't move anything uh, using any of the controllers. I simply went into the graph editor and moved everything around. And it was, uh, it was rough, but I, I, I loved how it turned out. Right. There's a lot of personality in it. There's still some jank here. You can see, but it's fun. I had like, I don't know, man. I like, I had a lot of fun. I was able to get a little bit of arrogance going by turning the head up, poking the chest out. You know what I mean? And it's fun. I had that hand going. I've got a little bit of micro movement in this hand right here. The hand on the hip does look awkward, but I don't know, man. Like this was fun. You get those, you see how I got the legs going towards the inside. You see that right there? That's just to inject just a little bit of femininity because I did want this to be a more feminine walk. Um, I hope I succeeded in that. We'll see. <laughs> I'll leave that up to you to decide. Tell me in the comments below. But yeah, it was fun. It was engaging. I learned an absolute butt ton about using the graph editor to edit animations and to, to make it do what I want it to do. And so, yeah. This is the villainess walk cycle. Let me turn off the camera so you guys can really get a look at it, right? Yeah, this was fun. This was fun. Very difficult, very difficult, but still fun. All right, stop. So after the villainess walk cycle, I had an idea. I wanted to do something that was opposite of the villainess walk cycle, right? So the villainess walk cycle was very arrogant, open, confident, right? very feminine. So I wanted to do something that was a little bit more guarded and kind of like the direct opposite of that um, villainous style walk. So This is my timid walk cycle. Um, very slow, cautious steps. I wanted, you know, kind of hunched over the hands. Oh, dude, let me tell you, the hands were a nightmare. I was so lost the entire time I was animating the hands. It was so difficult for me to do, but I, eventually I got, cause I, originally I wanted him to be wringing his hands like this. You know what I mean? It wasn't, it didn't look good. I couldn't get it to look good. And with all of the other movements, like the way his torso is going from side to side. So eventually I settled for him just uh, doing his thumbs like this. And I think it turned out pretty good. All things considered, he's hunched down, he's looking, 
you got the the blur on his face, which um, was easier than I expected. Honestly, I thought that would be a lot harder. But again, this one was another one that was so fun. I just love animating, guys. Like, stick with me. Stick with me. I'm going to make some really baller animations later on. This is just the beginning, right? We are at the beginning. But so, yeah. This is kind of how you feel when you're first starting a new project like this. You know, you feel a little timid. And it's it's it, if it weren't for the encouragement of uh, some of my buddies online telling me, hey, dude, just do it. This would be me still. I'd still be timid and I'd still be hiding. Uh, but I, this one was fun to do, super, super engaging. And it really forced me to stop and pay attention to the smaller details, such as the hand, the hand placement and... Uh, micro movements and how they interact within the same timing as uh, the rest of the body movement. So this one is one of my favorites. It's not my pure favorite, but it was still fun. Still fun. We're getting the next one is going to be my favorite, my my hands down favorite. I had so much fun with this next one. You won't believe it. The pimp walk. For those of you who are a little bit younger in my audience, you might not know or understand how crazy people were about pop and lock dancing in the early 2000s. It was all the rage. Now, originally, my plan for the pimp walk was to be a very cartoony, almost uh, old school 1970s pimp walk. You know what I mean? To have the cane, the feathered cap, and everything, and just be bopping along, right? However, when I went to go research, I found so many pop and lock videos and I, I was like, this is it. This, I have, this is what I'm doing now. This there's, I can't do the other thing because this is clearly the better of the two options. Okay. So just be popping along. This one was so fun because like the whole time I had like old school bass jazz going in my head. You know what I mean? It was just booping, just booping. Boop. The side view is not much, but front view, right? It's, he's just moving along, just the grooving with it, right? This is my by far my favorite one. This one was the most difficult because it doesn't use like traditional poses, like because a normal walk cycle has like six main poses, and then you do the in betweens from there. So this one didn't have those traditional poses, so I had to make them up as I went, and I just I love it. I fell in love with this one. Like I I spent sixteen hours doing this one and laughing maniacally. I was having so much fun with this. You guys have no idea. This was super, super duper fun. This is my personal favorite, even though it's not the best. You got a little bit of hands going. You got <laughs> Just look at this thing. Look at this. Oh, I love this one. This one's my favorite by far, hands down. Bar none, my favorite walk cycle that I did. So this last walk cycle was also quite fun for me. It still doesn't beat out the pimp walk because that one was just too much fun. I had too much fun researching it. I had too much fun making it. Even if it wasn't probably the best one here, it was by far my favorite. So the next one, uh, I had a lot of energy when I was doing it. And I was like, what's another fun, high energy, entertaining walk cycle that might challenge my assumptions a little bit? And uh, I saw my niece skipping through the hallways and I was like, that's it. We're doing a skip cycle. So it's not a walk cycle. It's a skip cycle. Sometimes, man, you just got to dance to your destination and skipping's like the best thing you can do for yourself, right? It's super fun, super bouncy. It's, there's not, like, not a whole lot of craziness going on, but it's high energy. You know what I mean? It just keeps going. Doot, 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 doot. I worked a lot with the timing of the head bob because I wanted it to seem like falling and then head goes to the side, falling, head goes to the side. You know what I mean? Um, the hands were really fun. The hardest part with this one is for a walk cycle, you're transitioning your feet. You're going from foot, uh, right? So you're going from foot to foot with a walk cycle. With a skip cycle, oh, wow. You're pushing off with one foot and then landing on it and then pushing off and then pushing off. So you'll you'll notice the feet as <laughs> I know I'm over explaining. It. But yeah, this one was just to have fun, high energy, super duper interesting to me. I had a lot of fun with it. 
All right, in my next video, I'm going to be doing a challenge animation. That's right. I just started animating and I'm already out here to do a challenge. I'll reveal more information on the challenge in the next video uh, as for like the rules, how I'm gonna do everything uh, and all of that. For now, I want you to go into the comment section below and give me two poses as extreme as you want. For instance, you can say laying on the back, left ankle on right knee, hands, behind the head. And then the second pose, uh, upside down salute. Whatever you can dream of. Give me two poses. I'm here for it. I want the smoke. You cannot defeat me. All jokes aside, just give me two poses. I'm here to have fun. I'm here to learn. This is the learning series. So I'm really trying to push myself um, and I'm really trying to learn as much as I can. And if you do decide to give me two poses, thank you very much. So that's it for me, everyone. Uh, let me know what you thought of these walk cycles in the comments section. Uh, which one was your favorite? Which one did you hate? I'm here for any praise or critique you want to give me. I'll do my best to address it as quickly and as efficiently as possible. And, you know, as always, if you want to help me out, do the whole like and subscribe thing. If you want to support me, you can head on over to Patreon. The link will be in the description of this video. I'll, I try to upload at least two to three times per week and I will upload a video of me critiquing or self critiquing rather my previous video, which this video, see you there.